I'm uh, uh, Mr. Rajesh Shah. I work at the uh, University Hospital of South Manchester. I'm a consultant uh, thoracic and transplant surgeon. I'm also the clinical director of uh, cardiothoracic services. So in the next 20 minutes, uh, I'll try and share with you uh, the broad uh, concept of uh, surgery for chronic pulmonary aspergillosis. And uh, the learning outcomes are, uh, uh, we'll try and go through what is chronic pulmonary aspergillosis, how is CPA managed, what is the prognosis for chronic pulmonary aspergillosis, and is there any role for surgery. So what is chronic pulmonary aspergillosis? It is a spectrum of disease characterized by slow and progressive destruction of the lung. Patients are not immunocompromised or minimally immunocompromised. Patients usually have pre-existing lung disease like TB or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. There is formation of new cavities or expansion of the existing ones, plus minus fungal ball or presence of nodules. They have prominent respiratory or systemic symptoms for at least more than three months. They have raised inflammatory markers and they have positive aspergillus IgG or biopsy showing hyphae consistent with aspergillus species. So what are the different uh, radiological phenotypes of chronic pulmonary aspergillosis? It could present as a aspergillus nodule as shown in, in, in the picture. It could present radiologically as a simple aspergilloma as shown in the next slide. It could present as chronic cavitary pulmonary aspergillosis shown in the third picture here or it could present as chronic fibrosing pulmonary aspergillosis as shown in the last picture. The medical treatment options uh, include uh, uh, Various drug therapy like etraconazole or voriconazole, posaconazole, isavuconazole, or intravenous therapy like mycofungin and amphotericin B. So, what is the outcome of medically treated chronic pulmonary aspergillosis? The one-year survival is 86%, the five-year survival is 62%, and 10-year survival is 47%. So why should one consider surgery? What are the aims of surgery and what are the benefits of surgery? The aim of the surgery is to cure the disease avoid complications of chronic pulmonary aspergillosis, prevent progression, and possibly avoid uh, antifungal treatment. The outcome depends on ability to fully resect the diseased portion of the lung, the experience of a surgical team, adequate lung function, and appropriate performance status. So what are the indications for surgery in chronic pulmonary aspergillosis? Number one, it could be removal of a nodule for diagnostic and therapeutic purposes or it could be removal of a simple aspergilloma in an otherwise normal lung. It could be uh, dealing with large volume hemoptysis or 
failure to control the disease with medical therapy alone, a large residual cavity increasing the risk for secondary infections, complications resulting from progressive disease, and to improve quality of life. So when is surgery indicated? Obviously these are highly complex, difficult and challenging operations. So it's important to weigh the risk versus the benefits. The risk of the operation could be any of the complications which include spillage into the pleural cavity resulting in an empyema, development of bronchopleural fistula with persistent air leak, hemoptysis, relapse. Benefits would be a life-saving operation, especially in cases presenting with massive hemoptysis, and surgery could be potentially curative, and in some cases, uh, the antifungal treatment may be avoided. So what are the different uh, surgical procedures which could be done in chronic pulmonary aspergillosis. It could be uh, a form of lung resection. The commonest operation is a lobectomy whereby we would remove a lobe of the lung. The right lung has got three lobes and the left lung has got two lobes. Removal of any of the lobe of the lung uh, would be a lobectomy. It could be a segmentectomy which is less than a lobectomy and we would remove a one or two of any of the 19 segments of the lung. Some segments are easier to remove than others. The third procedure which could be considered is a sublobar wedge resection which is removing the aspergilloma with surrounding normal lung tissue. The fourth procedure which could be considered not done very often and should be done only in extreme cases is a pneumonectomy which is removal of the entire lung. In cases where the aspergilloma is within a bulla, we would do a bullectomy which is just removal of the bulla along with the aspergilloma and in cases of uh, aspergillus empyema, we would consider doing a, a pleurectomy and decortication. So the next slide shows the uh, frequency with which the various surgical procedures are, are performed. Lobectomy is the most commonest operation done uh, in almost 50% of the cases in this large series by Farid et al. Uh, published in the Journal of Cardiothoracic Surgery in 2013. The next common operation is a sublobar wedge resection. Pneumonectomy, as I said earlier on, is, is not performed very frequently, but it is still done in about 10% of the cases. Decortication in 7% of the cases and uh, very rarely a bilateral lung transplant uh, done usually in, in cases uh, with other lung pathology like sarcoidosis which has got secondary contamination with aspergillus disease. So what are the long term outcomes as a result of surgery? For simple aspergilloma, the 10 year survival is anywhere between 69 to 90 percent. For chronic cavitary pulmonary aspergillosis where one carries out surgical intervention, the 10 year survival is anywhere between 63 to 80 percent and it's slightly less than in simple aspergillomas. The following slide uh, outlines the literature uh, to date in the surgical outcomes for chronic pulmonary aspergillosis. The point to be highlighted here is the earlier series has got significant higher mortality than the recent series and in general the complex aspergillomas 
carry a much higher mortality than in simple aspergillomas. So once again to reinforce the surgical results and outcomes uh, in terms of mortality have improved in the last decade or last couple of decades and simple aspergillomas consistently carry lower mortality than in complex aspergillomas. So what are the complications which could occur after these challenging and difficult operations? It could be persistent air leak, could be pleural space problems, could be bronchopleural fistula, an empyema, especially if there is spillage of the aspergillus into the pleural cavity, pneumonia, wound infection, respiratory failure, and massive hemorrhage. It is important to optimize preoperatively as much as possible in order to minimize the postoperative complications. In particular, the nutritional status should be uh, optimized, which may include uh, dietary input and peck feeding, optimization of the respiratory status with routine physiotherapy, antifungal treatment especially to prevent aspergillus empyema, to prevent recurrence, to prevent progression of residual disease and in multicavitary disease. At least two weeks of IV voriconazole or macafungin prior to surgery is advisable. For discrete aspergillomas or simple aspergillomas where the risk of contamination is, is low, preoperatively and antifungal treatment may not be necessary. In cases of significant persistent hemoptysis, bronchial artery embolization could be considered. Intraoperatively, if there is contamination of the pleural cavity with the fungus, we would advocate washing the pleural cavity with 2% thorolidine or amphotericin B deoxycholate it can be used for pleural decontamination during surgery and it may, it may prevent uh, aspergillus empyema. When should we consider post-operative antifungal treatment? In patients with localized lesion or in patients where there is no spillage at the time of the operation, we would consider stopping antifungal treatment shortly after surgery. Postoperatively, we would uh, advise antifungal treatment in case there is spillage into the pleural cavity to minimize the risk of pleural aspergillosis and in uh, cases where there is residual disease left in order to minimize the risk of long-term relapse. Relapse is unlikely if simple aspergilloma is completely resected and monitoring can be done clinically with aspergillus IgG and chest x-ray. Thank you. Mm -hmm.